you ever think, why did we discuss so much about food today? Because something is terribly wrong with this whole thing. You know, something is not right. That is why we are talking about food so much. You know, whenever we disconnect from ourselves, we have to release the stress in some way. So, we either eat a lot or we indulge in sensory pleasures. This is exactly why we are discussing so much about food. But the point in time you start connecting with yourself, you start listening to your own body, your vibrations, your eating habits will completely change. You will eat only what you need to eat. And diseases are also related to do the same. Whatever you trap, become diseases. I look at life in simple terms because I do not understand most of the things you say. I feel that intellectually we can analyze so many things and analysis never helps you to, to convert. But I, it's good to know. This is all important. All these things are important. It's important to understand. But unless knowledge becomes wisdom, there is no change in life. Knowledge has to be converted to wisdom. Knowledge sits here. It only takes you up to your grave. When you die, it dies. But wisdom sustains you. It sustains the species outside. It sustains the earth. If you look at all the scriptures of every religion, all the prophets, all the great masters have spoken simple things. We complicated it. You know, we interpreted it in the wrong way and complicated it. So, my understanding of life is keep it simple. And, uh, you know, if you look at 80% uh, of our vital functions are not in the control of your conscious mind. That is why we are alive today. Heartbeat, circulation, respiration, digestion, and most of the other vital functions are controlled by the subconscious mind. We have nothing to do with it. So when we have nothing to do with it, we stay alive. But the idea is that be conscious about it. The first level is be conscious about the breathing, be conscious about the vibrations of the cell. That is from Swara to Nada. Nada is the, 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 the beats of the body, the heartbeats, the circulation. There is always a rhythm. Be aware of the rhythm and then you start going within and you start transferring things which the subconscious usually handles to your conscious mind. You can stop the circulation of your blood, you can eat what you like, you can digest a quill, you can do everything which you call a miracle today, which various masters are performing. I'll tell you my experience. Many years ago, I used to go to Himalayas every year. You will know I go. Um, actually, I'm coming from Himalayas. Yesterday, I was there. Um, well, uh, one long time ago, actually, I was also exploring. I met one man sitting outside an ashram. So, the mother of the ashram was taking food outside the ashram to give to this man. So, I asked him, why are you taking the food outside the place? Why can't he come inside? Then uh, the mother said, he does not eat food. I said, then are you are making fun of him? But you are giving food to him. Then he said, no, if you give it as an offering, he will consume. And then I, I, I was curious to know whether he actually eat food. A young guy, he looks young, I don't know how old is he, 30 years now. And a lot of food, sufficient food for four people was given to him. He consumed the whole thing. Then I, I told the mother, you said he doesn't eat, he is really eat. You know, I cannot eat half of what he has eaten. Then she said, yeah, if food comes to him, he consumes, but he disintegrates from here. He doesn't go down. He has already stopped the secretion of juices and things inside. So he, he does not actually need food. But if somebody offers him as a blessing, he eats it. And he disintegrates and he has already stopped the function. So he is safe. So this was interesting for me at that point in time because actually this is it. This is exploration. If uh, any of you have read uh, the ageless Himalayan saint, which I read, so the blog, you go to Google and type Mohanji, you get the blogs. Uh, this is a true living guy. He's more than 400 years old. And he, he was asking the guy, he was chanting a mantra to avoid food. What happened actually? So only the mantra chanting happened, food is still consumed. So yeah, where is the problem? So this mantra, Chut, Pipasi, Nivrti, was chanted to, to uh, disintegrate the food from here and no appetite. But what happened is, it is in the mind level. Whatever you do in the mind level cannot be converted to a reality. It, it just happens in the mind as a routine. So it should go within. It should be 
deeper, the whatever you try to do as a, as a method to convert your structure should be deeper. So this is the point. If you read that blog, it's a story, so uh, it might be interesting for you. I wouldn't want to tell more about it. But the point that I was telling is, uh, this is very interesting to know that there are so many uh, variations of it. Now, uh, the subject that I've been asked to talk is that uh, passion for compassion. That is basically because, as uh, you had said, that the 7 billion people are growing to 9 billion people. What have we consumed? We have consumed all the forest, almost. We have consumed most of the animals which are in the forest, we have taken their land off. One third of the total grain, grain cultivation is used for feeding animals. You know, and 12 pound of grain is used, uh, one pound of meat. To produce one pound of meat, you need 12 pounds of grain. If you give this 12 pound of grain to one small family, the family will survive for a month. One pound of meat will keep you only for one time. So, our whole ecological calculation is haywire, and we are trying to fire fight now. So, where is the problem? The problem is in our understanding. We have no idea about how the whole earth feels about it. Because we farm and we destroy. And then, uh, at average, this is a, a, I am not into statistics, please forgive me for that. This is all what I am reading from Facebook and other places. 7 billion people are consuming 21 billion uh, beings, average. So you can imagine how much of space is consumed, how much of uh, food is consumed, and then end of the day, what are we producing? You know? And no animal in the world dies with happiness. Forget about the pictures of the advertisement. This is not true. You know, happy cow, smiling cow and the meat as if it's plucking the meat and giving you. It's not so. It's killed. And why? I, I was not aware until uh, I was watching these uh, programs in USA. I never realized that the dairy industry is equally responsible. I never, uh, I never knew that 8 million calves are slaughtered in one year in USA alone. I never realized 1.5 million pregnant cows are slaughtered in London alone. Just imagine. You know, I, I feel that the motherhood is one of the most beautiful things on earth. You know, unconditional, completely unconditional. A mother feels unconditionally towards a child. And the cow cries the night over. I, I have some, you can go to YouTube and there are some videos I saw. The cow cries the whole night over in looking for the calf. Calf is already killed. If it's a male calf, kill it. Because dairy product, dairy industry does not need them. And then the cow is slaughtered later. Likewise, uh, uh, one of our people in uh, Europe, he posted a blog based on my speech called the Velocity of Violence. That is also there in the internet. If you go there, you can see it. Uh, I have mentioned what, he asked me what changed you? What made you feel so? One of the things I saw, a, a, a set of cattle was taken for slaughter. And one of the cows delivered a calf in the truck. So they had a, the driver of the truck had a promise to keep. He has to deliver the cows at a particular time to the abattoir. Otherwise, uh, he will lose job. So he put the calf outside on the road and take the cow, uh, took the cow and slaughtered the cow. And the calf was rescued by the police. Those pictures are there in that blog also. And this was very heartening. The cow, the, the new mother was slaughtered because the, the world needed the meat. And the calf was fortunately taken away, otherwise uh, it could have probably gone to slaughterhouse also. This is one thing which touched my heart. The second thing was the CCTV campaign which was happening in, in UK. Uh, they, they showed from the about the, a bunch of sheep was coming in for slaughter. And one uh, baby, the, the uh, baby of the sheep was drinking the milk. First he killed the mother, then he killed the baby. You know, while the, while the child was drinking the mother's milk. You know, these kind of things, I cannot even believe that we are doing in this world. You know, these are a few things which actually uh, really, really touched my heart. And how does passion happen? When conviction is clear. When your conviction is absolute, passion is automatic. What, what, was, what was Jesus' strength? He, he was fighting against the established systems. You know, dangerous. Dangerous. What you will end up getting assassinated. But what drove him? Conviction. Conviction leads you to passion. 
and especially anti cruelty see i am not a campaigner of uh, uh, any kind of food habits because i don't even know what what it is all about like all of you said i understood something from here but uh, if you ask me any technicality i am completely blank there but i believe in no violence if you have to consume food let it be non violent a tree produces an apple or an orange or a or a, um, a tomato then we are not cutting the tree to cut the tomato you know it's like a, the nails it doesn't hurt the plant if you pluck a mango from the plant it doesn't hurt the plant at all and actually the plant wants it because this is for the continuation of the species when you throw the seed away it grows into another plant so the, the total alignment of the whole thing should be understood clearly earth wants that earth would like to have continuation of species not a destruction of a species for the creation of another and second thing is that some people have sent mails to me asking so what about uh, forest animals you see there is a program in national national geography which is actually a, uh, a clear uh, guidance to that a group of deer are deer are running and a bunch of lions are chasing them they go in a particular direction and the shows in that in that program one deer suddenly takes off to another direction it's like an understanding between this clan okay you people escape i will sacrifice myself today a sacrifice and a victim put are completely different things what motivates a person is the sacrifice sacrifice motivates you victim put if you are bound captured and destroyed it in completely a different ball game you know it is amounting to murder sacrifice is not murder it actually gave itself life over its life away for the rest of the species to survive this is an understanding and and the same video shows lions are fully really happy they have eaten well and they are sleeping and these deers are walking in front of them so there is an understanding going on here you know so nature always is wise it is justified things they do is well justified it will never do something like what we do we kill for pleasure and uh, uh, one person told me a day uh, three days ago i was recording a video because animals australia wanted my uh, opinion or comment on the project so i recorded video and sent it so uh, one person had asked me so this uh, what is human role in the in the preservation of nature i said it's only destruction <laughs> we are only destroying the nature because of our non understanding we have no clue we have no clue that is why so many species so many species are extinct today